Hello and welcome to another video. Today I want to talk about how long it actually should take a person to climb in League based on a few different factors as well. So if we get right into it, then the first thing that we have to think about is how long does it actually take an account to climb, right? So for you to go up one, I think they're called tiers, so like gold 40 platform or something, right? You need 400 LP. and you might have heard many times that people talk about MMR always, and they talk about their LP gains and all of that stuff, right? And why do people find that so important, like what their LP gains are, what their MMR is, and so on and so forth? Well, the answer is pretty simple, actually. So if we're gaining 22 LP and we lose 21 LP, right? Or we gain 23 and we lose 22, it doesn't really matter, right? The important thing is the difference between the LP we're gaining and the LP we're losing. And Whenever we're gaining more LP than we're losing, that means that just going win-loss gives us a net gain, right? So, say that we gain 1 LP more than we lose, right? Which isn't really possible. I think the minimum is 2 LP, but let's say 1. That would mean that 400 times, if you did that, right? That you would then end up climbing 400 LP and you would end up being a higher tier, right? So that makes sense, obviously. Though there are a few issues with this logic. Firstly, that, as I said, having 1 LP more than loss, I don't think that's even possible. Because basically the way that LP usually works is... Okay, so I'll use the old system where it was centered on 15, right? Um, the way it would work is if you had a higher LP gain, that means you would gain 16 LP, but it also means you would lose 14. Because the LP gain would stray from this base point of 15 and go up or down, right? Obviously, it doesn't work like this in every single ELO, and some ELOs had like a difference. For example, um, well, let's say like Iron Bronze worked a bit differently. Um, Challenger games would work differently because you would get like different matchmaking than... Uh, I think that's the most... Yeah, that's like the most common cases. That's the most common cases for sure. But as you can see then, that means that if you just played 800 games here, you would end up climbing, right? But this is not really true, because this would mean that your MMR hat would have to keep going up while you have 50% win rate, which just wouldn't happen, right? The reality is that you would gain maybe like 50 LP or something, or 40 or whatever else it might be, and then your MMR would end up being plus 15, minus 15, right? And then, then you would just be like, oh, okay, I don't gain anymore. So this is the first factor. And for most of you, that's going to end up being something like, I don't know, like maybe you have like plus two or plus four or something, which means that in reality, you're only going to need like 200 or 100 repetitions of this. And this will mean 400 or 200 games, right? So this is the amount of games that it would take. And... This is all fine and dandy, but another thing to think about here is that your win rate matters quite a bit, right? So if you have like 51% win rate, let's take 60% actually, because it's easier to think about in 10 games for you than in 100 games, probably. So if you have like a 60% win rate, that means that you win 6 and you lose... Um, you lose four, right? That means that you get a plus two. And this is when these new LP changes start to matter a lot, right? How they made it so you gain like 20 or more LP instead of gaining 15. Because in the old system, when you would get this, right? 60% winner, that's 30 LP for you. But in the new system, that ends up being like... For most people, it ends up being like 45 to 50 LP. So you can see that you just got a lot more LP for winning more games which makes you climb faster and get to the ELO you should be at. And win streaks also end up mattering a lot more, and loss streaks matter a lot more, because obviously it's a double-edged sword. But this is why having a high win rate is very beneficial, right? But you don't really need a super high win rate, because this pattern applies no matter what your win rate really is. It's just that you're going to need to play a lot more games. So for example, if you have a 60% win rate and we have the same LP gain and loss, but our LP gain is 15 or like 23 to 25, right? It ends up being this. 
And in these scenarios, in the old system, we would need to win. We would need to repeat this pattern like 14 times, I think. So we would need to play 140 games, right? Because we're counting a sample size of 10 games. So it would end up being 140 games. And we would end up gaining the LP that we need. But in this new system that we have right now, this means that it's actually more like nine times or less, you know, like maybe it's like eight to nine, you know. So you can see that they just made it a lot less grindy because now we only need like 80 to 90 games, right? Instead of needing 140 games. So basically just saved like 50 to 60 games just because you were doing well, right? This obviously also means that if you start doing badly and you have like a 40% win rate, then you will drop ELO that much faster as well. But for most players, having a 60% win rate is not going to be that realistic unless you suddenly improve or, I don't know, maybe you just find like a new way to play. For example, when people followed my Evelyn spreadsheet or something, they would get like pretty good win rates and that would happen, but that's just because their whole play style would change, right? But for most people, they improve gradually and on a smaller scale, so it ends up being more like 51, but 51 is pretty low, so like 52 to 55, right? So what do we actually have here? Now we need to look at the sample size of 100 games. We will have 52 wins and 48 losses, or 55 wins and 45 losses, which means that we either have a net gain of plus 4 wins or plus 10 wins, right? And this is how you always figure out how long it's going to take you to climb, if you actually care about that. Um, and this also shows you how important it is to try to win every single game if you actually want to maximize your ELO. There are people who don't really care about that. Most people don't really try to do that. And that's why some people like Magic Felix or something, who are known for having really insane results in solo queue, they end up getting even more insane results because they actually try to maximize this. Like, for example, I will throw games if I'm bored or if I'm tired or whatever. But that guy will only play when he's not tired, when he's not bored, when he's not tilted. That guy will try hard every game. And if he edges out a few more wins, then he gets a few hundred more LP, right? Over the course of a season, which is really impactful. But okay, so 4 wins or 10 wins, right? If we look at the new system at the moment, let's just assume that it's 25 LP that you gain, because it makes the calculation easier, right? So in this case, we get 100 LP. And in this case, we get... Uh, 250 LP, is it? Yeah, it should be. So, as you can see, in 100 games, we actually get a pretty decent amount of LP, even with a pretty so-called mediocre win rate. But this is like a decent win rate anyway for climbing. That's why you have to focus on the long journey, because you don't have to be a lot better than your ELO to get like 52 to 55 win rate. And this then translates into you needing 400 games, right? 100 games to climb a tier, I think it was. Or you're needing like 150 games or something like that, you know? That's pretty good. This is pretty good, obviously, right? So, this is obviously something that can only happen though if you're already at the level, right? Of the healer you're gonna play in. But and this tells you how long it usually takes people to climb. And with this new perspective, we also know that it's like 80 to 90 games with 61 rate, right? And okay, we can keep these things here and we can remove all of this stuff. So now we want to think about how long it actually takes a person to improve, right? So what does improvement really mean for us? So Firstly, there are a few ways that improvement can be a bit different. So there are ways where you, or well, that's not even improvement, but I'll just name it anyway. So we call it improvement, but it's really just meta, um, ELO inflation, like abusing random stuff, you know, like stuff like this, which will actually make you climb. But it's not really useful because it's not a long-term solution and whenever this stuff gets nerfed or your stuff gets changed in the game or whatever, or you stop abusing it, you just fall in ELO. So some examples of stuff here is like 
Maokai Udyr in jungle. Then Elo inflation would be something like um, abusing when LP gains are bugged slash overtuned. Like I think right now they're like overtuned or something. Um, then you can also transfer abuse. Then you can also. I mean, I don't know, whatever. Just do some random stuff that makes you gain ELO that you don't really deserve. Um, we can also add dodging into this. I don't know. Because dodging is low key ELO inflating because it doesn't affect your MMR at all, and yet you avoid like guaranteed losses. So if someone just tanks those losses and you don't tank them, then it's just going to be a difference in the end ELO. Like, for example, I barely dodge, and a lot of the time I just lose because, well, I get into the game and it's just like, well, what do we do here? Nothing. Flip and hope for the best. Maybe we have a 30% chance of winning. Then, though obviously the lower elo you are, the less the drafts really matter, technically, but it's not exactly true. Because people will say that if you're low elo, drafts don't matter. But if I play against like, I don't know, let's say Malphite, Maokai, Annie, and then like some really afk boring bot lane like i won't have fun and my odds of carrying are a lot lower than if i played against i don't know like let's say a nivia top lane that's like gold or something and i played like against i don't know some random jungler nidalee gold nidalee and then like zeret in mid lane stuff like that you know Obviously, you can't say that, oh yeah, the win rate will actually be the same, the draft doesn't matter at all. That's not like, really true, but um, it just matters a lot less, you can outplay it more. So then abusing random stuff can also be something that people do. For example, right now there is like an exploit where you can queue with no one being there and in your game and you just like push and you win and then, I don't know, you're just solo in the game. There's stupid stuff like that, or... Mm, trying to think of the other ones that happened. I don't know, like... It, like, random cheating stuff, or... Like, whatever, really. That's... All of this is not really improvement, it's just like temporary ELA to gain, as long as you keep abusing this stuff, and as long as it's available. Um, so, yeah, pretty interesting. But then we have the actual two types of improvement that are actual improvement. So the first type is building a good base. So you build a really good base, and then it's much easier for you to improve after that, technically. And um, yeah, you just have like an easy time later on. So for example, set your gold right now, right? But you build a really good base until... Uh, I don't know, like D1, let's say. And then then you improve to, I don't know, child or something. Who fucking cares what it is? But this will leave you with a much simpler job here than if you... Um, than if you build more ELA. Because... Right, there is, there is stuff that you can improve on in this game where it won't actually net you a lot of elo early on. So for example, something like looking at the lanes all the time. It won't get you a lot of elo in like gold. It really won't. Honestly, you can just not look at the lanes at all and you can still climb. Honestly, it can even be easier for you to climb without looking at the lanes at all to diamond 4. Because... The thing is, you can recognize most of the stuff from the minimap, and if you get too much info, you can get overwhelmed, or you can misread, or whatever. So honestly, you can just you can just AFK full clear, and you can get diamond anyway, right? You just have to be like decent at your champ, and that's kind of it in that scenario. But when you actually do that, and you climb a bit, then you get to say like diamond 1 or master or something, right? Improving from that point onwards is going to be much harder because what you learned is the stuff that's really really simple to learn, right? So you can learn the hard stuff first or you can learn the easy stuff first and if you learn the 
easy stuff first, and that means that the hard stuff is going to come later. And you're actually going to be able to avoid it. So either way, you're going to be in a similar position. But the reason I recommend most people to learn the easy stuff first is because then you're going to actually be playing in a better environment where you can practice better. So I think it's pretty obvious that you can improve more by playing in, say, Master or something and playing in Gold 4, you know? Like you're playing against kind of robots, I'll be honest. So um, that is a thing to keep in mind. But this is also the difference between people who play, say, ganking junglers and people who play like um, farming junglers. So you can you can call both. You can argue in a way where you can think, okay, well, both are um, both can have a hard and an easy way. But I think that farming junglers just have a more streamlined way of improvement at the start, and that makes it so that the game is a lot more consistent for you, so I think it's like easier to improve on. While the ganking and invading and whatever else junglers, those ones have a harder path, kind of, to really improve. But sadly, in the case of jungle, it doesn't really mean that you will end up having an easier time later by a lot, so I don't really recommend that either way. But in laning and stuff, it's really applicable. So yeah. with this, we have some ideas here, right? So how many games would each of these like really add to us, right? So this, for example, takes like no games, like let's say zero to 30 games, right? You don't really have to learn anything. You're not really improving. Maybe you have to pick up Maokai or Udyr. But I mean, honestly, if you can't pick up Maokai or Udyr, that's kind of impressive in, a, <laughs> in of itself. So I don't know. Um, so yeah, in the first scenario here, we're still gonna have this, right? Still the same kind of games. You climb. But um, the problem with this is that this is really hard capped. So at some point, you're gonna stop getting elo inflation from this and you can't abuse harder, you know? Like you can abuse more stuff. You can abuse Maokai and dodging and abuse the LP stuff. But at some point you will run out of stuff to abuse. So regardless of what it may be, you will run out of stuff to abuse. Then if we build a good base, right? So we try to get the fundamentals in, try to improve a lot, right? So I think that in this case, if you play it, say, I would recommend you play like three games a day at least, right? So I mean, three days a game, uh, three, <laughs> three games a day is completely fine. And then on weekends, maybe you can do like six or something if you have time or nine or whatever it may be. But you have like good deliberate practice then let's just say three a day and you do that the whole month right and you would have like let's say 100 games per month right so i think in this case what you would want is to get to i mean if you want to go like up one tier i think that something like three months should really be satisfactory for you for sure so you would end up with something like 300 games because we have to keep in mind that we have to also play the games, right? So first we have to like improve to the point where we can even get a higher win rate than 50%. And then I think that in three months or something, you should be able to achieve something like this for sure. And we have some buffer. So I think something like 300 games is pretty fair, right? And this is like one tier. And then if we set something like gold to diamond one or something right i think that would end up being like 600 games right because i think it would take you like six months of actual good practice to do something like this most likely for most people though obviously there are outliers who will do it faster or people who will do it slower but i think this is a pretty good average if you're actually improving and actually trying to incorporate stuff well if you use stuff that is more simple, right? Or for example, follow spreadsheets or whatever else where people actually tell you what to do, right? But it's really streamlined and cookie cutter, then I think this can end up being like two to three months for all the way from gold to like diamond one or something, you know? So 200, 300 games, maybe 400, you know? Something like that. So it would be quite a bit less games especially the 
the first like jump, right? The first tier, I think that would be like 100 games or something for most people. But you have to keep in mind that you will be paying for it later, kind of. Because if you actually want to go from like D1 master here, then and climb up, right? I mean, this really depends how long it's going to take for people. But I think that this is going to take you like, if we said this is like 100% of the time, right? This is probably going to take you like 150 or 200% of the time. So whatever you're gaining here, you're going to lose here. But um, it's up to you really which one you choose. This just gives you a more solid foundation, while this gives you a more um, quick rise. It's also pretty good to play in higher elo, though, so I do recommend this quite a bit, because if you play in higher elo, you get comfortable there. Because when you first play against like diamond players, you will think, wow, they're like better than me, or kind of like an imposter, you know? Then like master player here, like, am I really like good enough? you're like against GM or child players and you're like, hmm, and this guy's like pro and ah, can I do this? You know, There's some doubt obviously for everyone. But yeah, in the end, we have some numbers like these where if you're already better, obviously it's going to take you a lot less games to climb. But if you're not, then you should expect to, as you can see, put at least a few hundred games into climbing. And even if you are a bit better than your ELO, you still need to put a few hundred games. And this will also transition to my final point, which is I want to talk about how <laughs> I want to talk about how griefing affects us, right? So 52% of 400, right? So in 100 games, we are getting plus four. So we are getting 52 wins and 48 losses. But you know, if we grief two out of 100 games, that means we're not climbing. Here, if we grief 5 games, here, if we grief 10 games out of 100, we're not climbing. So really make sure that you know what your priority is, because if your priority is to climb and to be as high as you can be, then never ever grief, never FF, never flame, like never do any of this stuff. Because doing this 1% of the time already stunts you this much. Like if you grief 1 out of 100 games, you know, that's minus 40 LP. Or, well, at the moment, I think it's like minus 50 LP. You lose 50 LP for griefing one game. Remember that. Next time you decide to, like, FF or grief or give up or something, that's 50 LP that's just, that it's costing you. Every time. Though, a disclaimer is that if you're actually going to end up climbing anyway and you're, like, gold right now, then it doesn't really matter how many games you lose, so you shouldn't focus too much on one race because a lot of people get baited by this. It doesn't matter too much because if you're going to climb anyway, then the win rate that's going to matter the most is the one at an elo that's actually like decent for you, you know, an elo that you're actually struggling in. Because if you're keeping like 60 win rate right now, it doesn't really matter. Like when I keep like 90 win rate or 80 or something, you know, it doesn't matter if I grief a few games and my win rate goes up or down because I will climb either way. But then when you're actually starting to struggle, that's when it matters the most. So. Either way, I hope you enjoyed the video. I tried a bit of a different format, just talking about some somewhat interesting stuff. And yeah, if you enjoyed it, then like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Peace.